A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark, chapter 15, verses 1 to 39. The passage is taken from the message version of the Bible. At dawn's first light, the high priests with the religious leaders and scholars arranged a conference with the entire Jewish council. After tying Jesus securely, they took him out and presented him to the pilot. Pilate asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? He answered, If you say so. The high priests let loose a barrage of accusations. Pilate asked again, Aren't you going to answer anything? That's quite a list of accusation. Still he said nothing. Pilate was impressed really impressed. It was a custom of the feast to release a prisoner. Anyone that people asked for, there was one prisoner called Barabbas, locked up with the insurrectionists, who had committed murder during the uprising against Rome. As the crowd came up and began to present its petition for him to release a prisoner, Pilate anticipated them. Do you want me to release the king of the Jews to you? Pilate knew by this time that it was through sheer spite that the high priests had turned Jesus over to him. But the high priests by then had worked up the crowd to ask for the release of Barabbas. Pilate came back. So what do I do with this man you call king of the Jews. They yell, Nail him to a cross. Pilate objected, But for what crime? But they yell all the louder, Nail him to a cross. Pilate gave the crowd what it wanted, set Barabbas free, and turned Jesus over to whipping and crucifixion. The soldiers took Jesus into the place called Praetorium and called together the entire brigade. They dressed him up in purple and put a crown plated from a thorn bush on his head. Then they began their mockery. Bravo, King of the Jews! They banged on his head with a club, spit on him and now down in mock worship. After they had had fun, they took off the purple cape and put on his clothes back on him. Then they marched out to nail him to the cross. There was a man walking by, coming from work, Simon from Serene, the father of Alexander and Rufus. They made him carry Jesus' cross. The soldier brought Jesus to Golgotha, meaning Scout Hill. They offered him a mild painkiller, wine mixed with myrrh, but he wouldn't take it, and they nailed him to the cross. They divided up his clothes and threw dice to see who would get them. They nailed him up at nine o'clock in the morning. The charge against him, the king of the Jews, was scrolled across a sign. Along with him, they crucified two criminals, one to his right and the other to his left. People passing along the road jeered, shaking their heads in mock lament. You bragged that you could tear down the temple and then rebuild it in three days. So show us your stuff. Save yourself if you're really God's son. Come down from that cross. The high priests along with the religious scholars were right there mixing up with the rest of them, having a great time poking fun of him. 
He saved others, but he can't save himself. Messiah is he, King of Israel. Then let him climb down from the cross. We will all become believers then. Even the men crucified alongside him join in the mockery. At noon, the sky became extremely dark. The darkness lasted three hours. At three o'clock, Jesus ground out of the depths, crying loudly, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani, which means, My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? Some of the bystanders who heard him said, Listen, he's calling for Elijah. Someone ran off, soak a sponge in sour wine, put it on a stick and gave it to him to drink, saying, Let's see if Elijah comes to take him down. But Jesus, with a loud cry, gave his last breath. At that moment, the temple curtain ripped right down the middle. When the Roman captain, standing guard in front of him, saw that he had quit breathing, he said, This has to be the Son of God. The Gospel of the Lord Let us now listen to a short reflection on the Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, chapter 14, verses 1 to chapter 15, verse 47. Witnessing the Triumph and the Sacrifice On this Palm Sunday, as we journey toward Holy Week, the Gospel of Mark unfolds before us profound moments in the life of Jesus. Amidst the grand narrative, there lies a seemingly insignificant detail. A young man, wrapped in a blanket, who follows Jesus from a distance during his arrest. Mark, the evangelist, subtly weaves this peculiar incident into the fabric of his gospel. Let us explore its significance. The scripture scholars today say, the young boy is Mark himself. His home hosted Jesus' last supper with his disciples. As the disciples gathered, the young boy Mark observed in awe. Later, out of curiosity, he must have followed Jesus and his disciples to the Garden of Gethsemane. There he witnessed the agony, the betrayal, and the arrest. Mark's inclusion of this detail is his silent testimony. He was there, a first-hand witness to the unfolding drama. When the soldiers seized Jesus, Mark's fear overwhelmed him. He abandoned his blanket and fled. The, uh, this young boy, caught between loyalty and fear, mirrors our own struggles. How often do we flee from Christ when faced with adversity or temptation? The nakedness of the young man symbolizes the shame of humanity. But there is more to this scene as Mark may be referring to the resurrection of Jesus. Jesus too would be wrapped in linen, a burial shroud. The forces of darkness believed they had captured him and contained him in death. Yet that burial linen would not bind him. The tomb would not confine him. Jesus burst forth, victorious over sin and death. He has risen. Mark, through this young boy, foreshadows the empty tomb. With the linen left behind, the Savior gone. As we wave our palm branches, we are invited to follow Jesus closely, even when our fears threaten to strip us bare. And in the linen left behind, we find hope, the promise of the resurrection, the triumph of life over death. May this Palm Sunday lead us from the blanket of fears to the linen of hope.
Jesus is risen indeed.